the study of the book of Exodus. We're in Exodus 32, verse 5. This chapter is the tragic golden calf chapter. All this other good stuff that's been happening is suddenly crunched. Uh, these people are going to go absolutely sideways here. Here's the fifth verse. Now when Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a feast to the Lord. So the people came up, they surrounded Aaron, they said, Moses is missing in action, you make us a golden an idol. Aaron uh, empowered it, Aaron actually built the thing, and now they've declared that this is the God that led them out of Egypt. And now what have you got? Uh, now he basically affirms this. So he actually goes and he builds an altar before it. Now Moses is on the mountain getting the instructions for the actual, uh, the actual tabernacle, wilderness tabernacle, the sanctuary, which will have the, uh, in the courtyard, it'll have the burn altar for burnt offering, and then it'll have the holy and most holy place, and it'll have the Ten Commandments packed in there, and it's going to have the blood ministered from the, from the uh, bronze outer altar into the holy place and sprinkled before the curtain and, and all the other pieces we've talked about so many mornings. Uh, so that whole thing is coming, but guess what? How much blood do you see ministered here with this, with this calf idol? Zero, zed, nothing. There's no blood to be ministered. There's no priesthood here. It's just um, that whole thing, God is setting it up. But this is just a, a, uh, just a poor excuse uh, for the worship of God. There's, this is a blending in of, of Egyptian fake religion with the true religion. See, when there's no ministry of blood, there's no ending of sin, there's no transference of sin, there's no removal of guilt, there's no atonement made, there's no cleansing or no blotting out. This is just going to make a big, a big goofy mess. And go back to when God said, look, let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Well, if the sin isn't taken care of, God's not going to be dwelling among them. They'd be vaporized by his presence. So God is setting it up so that the, he can dwell with them. They now are taking matters into their own hands. They're going absolutely sideways with this weird Egyptian amalgamation thing going on. And there's no atonement. Uh, there's no sin, sin issue. It's just rituals. This is disaster. This is utterly, completely uh, wrong. And so that's what's going to happen here because they're not following God's directions. Sometimes we need to regroup and stop and rethink because we find out, you know, we've been off of God's plans for a long time. So let's go back, back up a notch, get on God's plan if he'll still have us. And uh, let's, let's, uh, let's humble ourselves and say, God, please forgive us. But here, this is, this is getting worse by the hour. So they declare there's going to be a feast and what's that? That's going to be a false worship day. Do you begin to see some interesting pieces here? Like, you know, Sunday is not commanded in the scripture, but Sabbath, Saturday basically is. And it's most churches today, most Christians go to church on Sunday, a day that God never commanded as a day of worship. It's a work day, according to God's Ten Commandments. And here is Aaron, the leader of Israel, at least the uh, leader pro tem, the immediate leader guy, because Moses is missing right now. He's, Moses is in an in interview with God. So that, that's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll give him a note. Well, he's got a note from his doctor there. But now Aaron is going to uh, declare some fake feast day that, that he's going to make up out of, out of nothing. No, we have, we have God's days, like the seventh day, the Sabbath. So there's interesting parallels here for, for us here in, in time's end of humans making our own stuff up again and again and again. All right, let's uh, carry on tomorrow morning. Thank you.